Homework over the weekend was worksheet number four. We're going to take a look at a couple of those questions. Question number two and five, starting with number two here. It says a 1,500-kilogram car traveling west at 90 kilometers per hour collides with a 1,400-kilogram truck traveling north at 72. They entangle, so that means they head off as one object. It's the, the metal in them, whatever it is, causes these cars to stick together. What's the velocity of the wreckage of both vehicles together after the collision. Now, something else they could say here, just like we saw in a couple of our textbook questions, maybe they don't stick together, maybe they don't entangle, but we could say, what's the velocity of the center of mass immediately after the collision? We'd solve it in exactly the same way, pretending they stuck together. All right, so let's draw the picture here, um, and we'll go from there. Uh, this is something that is, for a two-dimensional collision, critical. You've got to draw the picture. You have to. Okay, sometimes I'm walking around and people skip the picture. Don't do that. Hey, okay, people try to skip steps and then later on they have questions because they don't get something. It's like, well, no kidding, you don't get something. Okay, no kidding. If you're not following the steps, you're not going to get it. Now, just because you do follow the steps doesn't mean you're not going to have any trouble with it, but it means there's a lot less chance of you having trouble with it. So let's follow those steps, and the first step is draw the picture. We've got a 1,500 kilogram car traveling west. So let's draw, let's draw that this way. Okay, we're going to call that car number one. We're going to make its mass 1,500 kilograms. We're going to make its velocity 90 kilometers per hour. Now we've got another car traveling to the north. We're going to call that object number two. It's going like this. Its mass is 1,400 kilograms. And its velocity is 72 kilometers per hour. They stick together, and they head off as one object after the collision. So they're going to go off this way somewhere. It's kind of a little bit odd that the truck weighs less than the car here, but that's possible, right? Some trucks weigh less than some cars. Yep. Good question. Should I convert them to meters per second? We really should have circled this, right, to draw attention to it. I'll tell you what. You can actually get away in conservation of momentum without converting the units here, as long as you're consistent. Now, if you're puzzled by that at all, just convert. Just convert it to meters per second, because you'll never go wrong with that. But because velocity appears in every term in conservation of momentum, the units cancel as long as they're the same units. Yep. No, you won't get a wrong answer. No, if you don't convert here, you won't get a wrong answer. Now, this is the first time that that happens, right? In impulse, you have to convert. In just straight momentum, you have to convert. But in this conservation of momentum, whether it's one dimension or two dimensions, you actually don't have to convert. Mass could be in grams. For um, velocity could be in kilometers per hour. It doesn't really matter um, because the units end up converting because it appears in every term. But like I say, I don't usually even mention that. Because, you know, most people are like, you know, let's just convert and, and then we don't have to worry about remembering when I have to convert, when I don't have to convert. Converting always works. Not converting occasionally works. All right. Uh, we don't have any funny angles here, so we don't need to worry about getting rid of a funny angle. Let's just go straight to our X and our Y components here. For X, we're going to say PI equals PF. We're going to say... M1 V1I plus M2 V2I. What's the value of M2 V2I? So 20 meters per second. Okay, except that we're not going to fill in 20 meters per second here because because the x value is zero. Okay, 20 meters per second is the y value of object number two. Does that make sense? Okay. Equals they stick together. M times VF. So we're going to say M1 is 1,500. 20, or sorry, 90 kilometers per hour, by the way, is 25 meters per second. But we're going to make it negative 25 because it's to the left. The combined mass is 2,900 kilograms. And we solve for VF there. Did we have the value of that? 15 times, 1,500 times neg 25 divided by 2,900.
Uh, that's wrong. Should be multiplied, right? 1500 times 25 divided by 2900. Negative 12.931. And that's in meters per second. Now, if I had kept this in kilometers per hour, I could have done that, right? But if I did, my VF would be in kilometers per hour, not in meters per second. Let's do the Y component here now. PI equals PF again. This time, M1V1I is zero because it's all on the x-axis, and we're analyzing the y-axis here. M2 is 1,400 times V1F is 72 or 20 meters per second. Solve for VF there. Only 1,400 times 20. Divided by 2900, 9.6552. How many people got both of those values for X and Y? If you did meters per second. Who did it in kilometers per hour? Nobody? Okay. Okay, so we're going to redraw this. We've got 12.931. We've got 9.6552. V is square root of 9.655 squared plus 12.931 squared. And theta is the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. What do you get for the value of V? Sixteen point one meters per second. Thank you, Emika. And theta is good. All right. Not crazy hard, hey, but we just gotta. We've got to be aware of um, when when something's zero. That's the big thing in this question, right? Recognizing what's zero, when it's x, when it's y. All right, let's take a look at number five as well. Five says a bomb is sitting at rest on the table. It's exploding into four pieces of equal mass. That's good news. Okay, as soon as I see that it's equal mass, what is that going to tell me? When I'm using conservation momentum. Yeah, I'm going to end up canceling out the masses. Right? Um, that doesn't always work for other concepts. If I'm doing impulse, for instance, I don't care if it's equal pieces or not. If I'm doing impulse, you can't cancel anything out. If you're doing conservation momentum, though, equal masses can cancel out. Uh, so let's draw a picture here. Keeping in the back of our mind that uh, that we can cancel out the mass here. Here's my explosion point. It says the first piece travels south at 55. I'm not even going to write down masses here. A because I don't know what they are. B because I'm going to cancel them out. The second piece goes west at 80. The third piece goes west of north. West of north is up here. That's going to be 40 meters per second. And the fourth piece is going to go, uh, we don't really know exactly, but we know it's going to go to the right, right and up, right and down. We're not really sure, but if I have that fourth piece drawn in the wrong place, I've said this before, it's not really the end of the world. So what do I got to do? Well, something should jump out at you here. I mean, I know I got to do conservation momentum. I know I got to do X and Y components. But what is it that jumps out at you in this question? Rosie? I don't like the funny angle, 30 degrees. So let's go off to the side somewhere and get rid of it. 
this is x, this is y, this is 30 degrees, this is 40 meters per second. Let's say sine 30 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Right, the opposite side is x this time. 40 times sine 30 gives me 20 meters per second. Let's say cosine 30 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. When I do that, I think I get 34.6410. Thank you. Now, I'm going to choose to redraw this. You don't have to. But I'm going to choose to do that. I got something going up here. I got something going over here. The y component is 34.6410. The x component is 20. Now we do our x and y components. Do you see what I've done here so far? All this stuff over here, all it's doing is getting rid of that funny angle over here. Using cosine and sine. We know that PI equals PF, but we know that the initial momentum here is zero because it begins at rest. Final momentum is, how many objects do we have? There's four, so let's say four terms, M1, V1, I. Actually, what's M1, V1, I equal to? The value of M1, V1, I is equal to zero because, look, it's all on the X. We're analyzing the X, and it's all on the Y axis. M2V2I is whatever, sorry, F I should say, M3V3F plus M4V4F. Masses cancel because they're equal masses. They appear in every term. They don't actually appear over here, but that's okay because it's zero. V2F is negative 80. V3F is negative 20. Let's see what I've see what I've done there. I had that whatever the value was, uh, 40 meters per second at 30 degrees. Now I got no angle, just 20 meters per second. And V4F. So for V4F, we're going to be 100 meters per second. Negative 80, negative 20 is negative 100. Take it to the side by adding, it becomes positive 100. I'm running out of space here. But y components. M1, V1I. Uh, sorry, F is the mass is cancel here. So we're just going to say mass times negative 55, but we've canceled at the mass, plus 0 for the y component of object 2, plus 34.6410 for the y component of object 3, plus V4F. I just skipped a couple steps there just because I'm running out of space here. Does it make sense what I've skipped, though, what I've done? I want to get there, negative 20.36, 0 0.3590. V4F is 20.3590, is that right? And now what? Now we combine them, right? Now, now comes the easy part, really. Now we say, sorry? Hundred this way, twenty this way, and the resultant is going this way. Hey, did I guess right when I said it was going to go up and to the right? Yeah, I did, and I know that because I got a positive x and a positive y for my final answer. Okay, so do the math there, right? Pythagorean theorem and the inverse tan function. I think you guys can handle that. If you can't, let me know, and I'll go over that with you.